he has destroyed completely the inherent tendency and defilement that form in every living being. Just as he is peerless, without an equal, so is the Buddha teaching unique, without a parallel, different from all other teachings. It is a teaching that has never been heard before, a doctrine he has discovered on reaching supreme enlightenment. The Buddha's teaching is Patisota Gami, one that goes against the current, one that goes upstream, whereas the doctrine of the unenlightened people, of those who have not eradicated their refinement, are Anisota Gami, going with the current, going downstream, that is leading to birth, aging, decay, death, sorrow, and defilement. The Buddha's doctrine leads on to the unborn, the unaging, the undecaying, the undying, the unsorrowing, and the undefiling trees of Nibbana. The Buddha Dhamma is not only going against the current, but also deep Gandhiya. Difficult to see this effect. Difficult to understand Duranugod, tranquil, sunset, excellent, sunset, beyond dialectic, atakkavati, subtle, nishuna, and intelligible to the wise, unlitter vedanya. This sublime teaching was realized by the omniscient one with great effect and incessant mental description stretches over a very long period in Sankara. This serious teaching is never appreciated or grasped by mind defied by lust, hate and delusion. The Buddha is an embodiment of all the noble qualities on earth, giving prominence with deep compassion, maha karuna, and understanding panya. On the day of his enlightenment, the Buddha gained the knowledge of recollection of past life, kubdhiyin vatana siti jnana. He recollected his manifold past life, not one or two births, but a hundred thousand births. He recollected many ages of world contraction, many ages of world expansion. This was the first knowledge gained by the Buddha in the first watch of the night. In the second watch, he gained the knowledge, Sutur Patinana, knowledge of the passing away and the reappearance of being. With this knowledge, he saw being passing away and reappearing, inferior and superior, fair and ugly, happy and unhappy in their destination. He understood how people pass on according to the actions. Those who are still conducted in body, speech and mind after death have appeared in states of unhappy destination in perdition and even in hell. Those who are well conducted in body, speech and mind after death have appeared in happy destination. In the last watch of the night, he gained the penetrative knowledge, Atvakya Jnana, of the Four Noble Truths. The penetrative knowledge of defilement, the origin, their cessation, and the way leading to the cessation of defilement. The Buddha was not an ordinary man, he was a prince who had renounced all the pomp and glory and the pleasures and comforts of the royal family to lead a life of austerity as a wandering ascetic. 
It looks incredible to think of the hard and vigorous life we did to achieve the supreme goal of enlightenment. These great genes have brought with him a very high degree of culture and good manners from his home and from the distant past. So were his immediate disciples who renounced the lay life, sons of highly respected, noble and affluent families. They were all intellectual and spiritual giants who spread the message of the Buddha for the good and happiness of the humanity out of compassion for the world. Then the all compassionate Buddha and his disciples came to the scene in full fame the heretical teachers and Brahmins became poverty. They appeared like the fireflies, losing their brilliance with the rising of the sun. So they accused the Buddha and his disciples to be evil talk to spoil their good reputation, but all such scandalous talk resulted in their own ruin. The heretics were ignorant that no one could defy or purify another, and that by one's own deed, one gets defied or purified. The pureness Buddha and his disciples were not a wee bit unruffled by praise or scandal of thought, and the life which speaks of life. The Buddha gained wonderful feats of psychic power by developing the mind, by bhavana, by for a very long period in Sankara. He said, Sittam mama asravam vimottam vidharattam paribhavitam sudantam My mind is submissive, purified, and free from all defilements. It is well defective and highly developed for a very long time in the round of rebirth. Therefore, the Buddha excels all the psychologists, philosophers, educationists, scientists, thinkers, and religious leaders the world has ever known. This omniscient Buddha and all other religious teachers oppose the path in their intellectual and spiritual development and in their service contribution to enlighten mankind and bring peace and happiness to the world. The Buddha is outstanding in his long service of 45 years for all beings, human, divine and animal. Following in the wake of this marvelous man, the Buddha, his disciples too, were able to go through despair, were able to read the minds of others, to hear sounds of deity and human beings far and near. They too acquired the knowledge to read their previous life and the knowledge to see beings passing away and reappearing in states of woe or bliss, according to their deeds, good and evil. The Buddha is Loka Vidhu, one who gained a sensitive knowledge of the three worlds, that is, the world of formation, Sankhara Loka, the world of being, Hatha Loka, and the world of location, Okata Loka. He had experienced, known, and penetrated them to this infinite knowledge. The Buddha possessed the penetrative knowledge of the habits, the inherent tendencies, the various temperaments, and the bent or inclination of all living beings. He knows people with little dust on their eyes and with much dust on their eyes. With keen mental faculties and with dull mental faculties. With good disposition and with bad disposition, people who are easy to teach and hard to teach, 
who are capable of achievement and who are not capable. Therefore, the world of beings in the three phases of existence was known to him in all their ways. The Buddha surpasses the whole world in the special qualities of virtue, similar concentration, samadhi, understanding, anya, deliverance, vimutti, and the knowledge and vision of deliverance, vimutti, nana, dakshana. He advised his followers to look to nothing but their own effort for salvation. We ourselves should make the necessary exertion. The Buddhas are only path pointed, abkhata. The Buddha is the fearless teacher of these things and men, showing the path to success here and now, of the life to come and of the ultimate goal. He pervades the whole world with thoughts of universal compassion and loving kindness, who has given the tiniest insect. He served all human beings without distinction of rank, without distinction of rank, birth, creed, or age. Emulating the previous Buddha, the Buddha Gautama has achieved the same perfection for an inconceivable period of time. He gave to the poor, the needy, and the worthy food, clothing, medicine, house, and property. His kingdom and his very life for the real and welfare of all mankind. His perfect virtue, compassion, loving kindness, and the life noble qualities as his great visitors had done in the past. He followed the right way, the noble eightfold path, avoiding the two extremes of indulgence in sense pleasures and self mortification. He is the unique teacher who discovered more than 2,500 years ago the reality of life, that all life is in a state of flux, that all life, whether human, divine, or animal, is a continuous question of changes. The so-called being is a mass of interconnected activity. Both mind and body are constantly in motion, ever and always dying and never static, even for a single moment. Yet, they can never be totally dispersed until the power that holds them together and enters them to rebirth that is claiming to be done away with. Jano no mo mo chitta pako kano bhayamantara to jatam sanjano nava buddhati. Delusion is an inward state. It is a foe within. It is a rival within. It is a murderer within. It is an opponent within. Delusion does great harm to oneself and to others. It perturbs the mind. That danger, that harm, that fear born within the due to delusion, man does not understand. Mulho Sangajanati mulho dhammang na pasrati andham tamang tada hoti ammo ho sahate narang. The deluded knows not his being or love. He does not see what is right and wrong, what is just and unjust. Darkness and gloom exist when delusion gets the better of him. Yodha mohan pahatn vana mohan yena muilati Mohan vihanti so sabbam adit so vudayantamam One who abandons delusion 
and is not deluded by what deludes him as sunrise destroys the gloom it is built in completely jīvam ahirikeṁ kākasūreṁ dhantinā apkandinā bhagandeṁ saṅkilipṁkeṁ jīvitāṁ The shameless man, the mischief maker, the man who meddles with other people's business, who is impudent or impure, He finds it easy to live in the world, like the crow that is all out to grab something. Siddhi mata cha dhujn jivam niti chan suchi kavetina Alene napa gandhena suddha jivena pasyata Life is hard for one who has a sense of modesty. who always sees for what is pure, who is honest and large-hearted, and who lives in purity and clear vision. Anadha-janu-no-lo-bho-lo-bho-chit-sapha-kopano Bhaya-mantara-to-jatang-tanjano-nava-buddhati Greed or lust is an inward tail. It is a foe within. It is a rival within. It is a murderer within. It is an opponent within. This greed or lust does great harm to oneself and to others. It begets misfortune. It perturbs the mind. That danger, that harm or fear Born within, due to greed, man does not understand. Luddho atham na janati, luddho dhammam na pasati, andham taman tada hoti, anglo bho sahate naran. The lustful knows not his gain or loss. The lustful do not see what is right or wrong, what is just or unjust. Darkness and gloom exist when lust gets the better of him. Yocha lobhaṁ pahatn vāna lobhaṁ jīvena lumbhati lobho pahi yate tamha uda bindu akokkhara When he abandons this evil lust, He clings not for lustful things. It slips from him as dew drops from the lotus flower. Neke chito ka padi devi tava dukha chalo ka sin aneka rupa yam pati chita pabhravanti eti All grief, all lamentation, whatsoever and diverse forms of sorrow in the world spring from affection and fondness. If there are no objects of affection and fondness, no grief or lamentation or sorrow. Satmāyate sushino vita sokā ye saṅkī annatthi kuriṅkī lōke Satmā asokaṁ virajaṁ patsayāṁ Yaṁ kaihe hairāt kuriṅkī lōke They are happy and free from grief. If no affection of or fondness to anyone in the world, therefore aspiring for the griefless, sorrowless, nibbana, 
are the afflictions to none in all the world. Sitarikin Guram Kita. Navanna rupe na naro sujano na vishwase itintavadastanina sukanyatanam viviyanjanina asanyataloka nimantaranti It is not easy to saddle man by his outward appearance. Do not trust him too soon in a fleeting glance. In the garb of well-conducted reason people, the badly believed move about in the world at large. Patirupa ko matti sa kundalo lo hadha ma so swan sanno taranti ke parivar sanna anto asudha bhavi so bhamana as an earring made of clay to count the feet, or as a curious coin coated over with gold, very many people move about in society seeking friendship, but inside they are impure, very dirty, extremely, very decent and calm. Consequences of actions done by thought, word, and deed. 